guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. It's a scoop session Tuesday here. Our friend Darren Doogie Wolfson from the 5 Eyewitness News Sports Department for some inside information and a little speculation about your favorite Minnesota sports teams. Is there a more giddy, happy owner in the NFL than Mark Wilf on NFL Network yesterday? He came, he was on with like Pelissero and some of those guys. They had a big setup at the, the league meetings. And Mark Wilf could not wipe the smile off his face for the 10 or 12 minutes he was up there talking about the future of the Vikings. And they asked him about Sam Darnold. And he's like, we like Sam Darnold, but we have a plan in place. It, it, he had the look, if he was a poker player, he had the look of a man holding pocket aces but trying to kind of make it seem like he didn't have pocket aces. Now, that was, I don't know if you guys saw that yesterday, but Mark Wilf, very excited for draft season, Dukes. I did see it. Now, to answer your question, is there a more giddy owner? Jimmy Haslam, he still has ownership, a stake in the Milwaukee Bucks, right? So the Bucks are playing well. The Bucks look like they've found their mojo. So maybe Jimmy, who once upon a time was in the mix to actually buy the Wolves to bring it full circle. But yes, to... You know, go along with your inquiry. Mark has to be right up there, right? Yeah, I mean, I did see it on NFL Network on Monday. The giddiness is there. Like, think about it. This time next month, right? So today is what? March 26th. April 26th. We will know. One month from now, we will know wow. who that guy is, who that quarterback is, that future quarterback of the Vikings. Yes, okay, Sam Darnold starts week one, but it's inevitable that whoever they end up with on April 25th is going to be the guy at some point in the near future. Do we think that the giddiness of Mark Wilf was brought on but by the fact it was a gorgeous day in Florida? By the fact that, you know what, he trusts his guys. Kevin O'Connell and Quazy, as, as he talked about, are going to do right and, and will be involved, but, you know, they are the experts. Or do you think that we saw a guy who was giddy because he knows something? Because he knows that there's prearranged deal, deals, who knows exactly He said what. they have a plan, right? Yep. So does that so, mean that they have a deal in place to move up or they have blueprints? So I'm I'm going to do set you up as if it's Thursday. Pretend it's a reckless speculation Thursday. None of this Tuesday BS. What do you think the happy ometer on Mark Wilf is because of what he knows. Well, I mean, I think it's up there, right? The weather probably does have something to do with it, though, knowing that, you know, even in New Jersey, it's probably not that pleasant right now. So it's hard to ignore just how beautiful it is right now in Orlando. In fact, the KOC family is down there, right? Perfect timing on spring break so they can do Disney and all that good stuff. But yes, I'm sure he has a good sense that the Vikings are going to move up. His front office is going to move up. The question is, is it a deal with LA at five, Arizona at four, New England at three, or perhaps Washington at two? I will tell you, there are league people, like I've heard some of the same stuff Pelissero has heard, but I'm trying to decipher, like, is it a smokescreen? Is it legit? But that there are enough league people who really believe J.J. McCarthy is the guy for Washington at two. Now, hey, you reach out to some people close to Jaden Daniels, they'll tell you, nope, Jaden is going number two. So I'm still trying to figure out how it plays out. Heck, would Washington even move off the second pick? We're still trying to figure out Adam Peters, the new front office there, Bob Myers with his NBA influence. Heck, Rick Spielman, our guy, with some fingerprints in Washington. What exactly is Washington going to do at pick two. If I had to bet right now, okay, so it's reckless speculation Thursday on a Tuesday, the Vikings don't get up to two, but I do think getting up to three New England is very much in play. You know, we went through yesterday, we did a full episode on Purple Daily going through Dan Graziano's. Dan Graziano on ESPN.com laid out specific trade scenarios for the Vikings moving up to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And so he laid out dealing directly with the Patriots at three. But then once he got to like five, six, he laid out scenarios where the Vikings would move up. Like, cause the Patriots, the, the problem with moving up with the Patriots is they may not want to move back to 11 Dukes. They may say, listen, we're open for business, but we ain't moving back that far. So can the Vikings go up to like five or six? whatever capital it would take to make that happen and then swing another trade with the Patriots 
so that they only fall back to like five. You know, those are scenarios that are being discussed right now by very plugged in national reporters. Um, So it's hard to get a read on this other than the owner of the Vikings and the head coach of the Vikings seem very happy and very at peace with what they've decided behind the scenes. But they have to be careful because if you move too early for like the fifth pick, okay, well, then the Giants could jump you for the four and take the fourth quarterback off the board. So so, like there's moves that you could make before the draft up to three. You could do it tomorrow up to five. I think you probably do that when the draft is already in motion, right? Well, yes. I mean, certainly you need to protect yourself. Yeah, I mean, that would be the scenario, right? That the Giants from six move up to four and quarterbacks go one, two, three, four. So then you're stuck at five saying, okay, now what? Although Marvin Harrison Jr. would be one heck of a consolation prize, Could right? You I imagine? mean, I just, oh, I don't see them going receiver for a second year in a row, but like if he's the clear cut best prospect in this draft class. Hey, they didn't need one in Like I would salivate to some extent. <laughs> like that would be really cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't see it actually happening, right? Much like, you know, my guy Mike Tannenbaum throwing out the idea of Kyler Murray to the Vikings. Okay, not happening, right? But fun fodder, you know, fun just to think about. But yeah, like to me, you're not making a trade in this moment for pick five. Now, do I think like dialogue is taking place right now? Like when you have all these people in one location in Orlando right now, yes, whether informal or more so formal, like chatter is happening right now mark wilf must have a good sense that they're going to be able to get up the question to me just remains how high not whether they can get up it's just how high do they get up and i I think the one thing that we don't know yet that's going to become important as far as the compensation package going back to a team goes is what is the what is the um marriage to that 2025 first because i will say this in o'connell's comments yesterday uh to reporters he did talk about the fact, you know, that we all have to be on the same page, that it's important that we're on the same page. And that's great. And uh, like, fundamentally, that sounds fantastic. But at the, at the end of the day, with a transaction like this, ain't no way the every decision maker is going to agree. So like, and this comes back to what we don't know. Who's the tiebreaker? Who says, hey, Kevin O'Connell is saying we got to move up to get Drake May. And this is what we're going to do. Because the compensation package is not going to be like palatable of, well, we're going to go look at Rich Hill. We looked at Rich Hill. We can't make that trade. So there's a lot of things here. And, and, you know, Quasi and Kevin probably see things differently. So this is the one thing we don't know because, because when asked, the Vikings aren't going to say it might come out someday, which is who has how much power and who has final say on things and who can put the kibosh on things. So, I just think it's important, while it sounds fundamentally great, that the whole building needs to agree. It's not really how you get this done. You're going to have some divisiveness, and at the end of the day, somebody's got to say, hey, you know what, screw it. Let's go get our quarterback. Well, I mean, I'm curious. Like, to me, there has to be alignment on if we can keep our 2025 first-round pick, let's do that. So, like, can we get up to four by giving up 11-23 plus more, but that more is not. Mm -hmm. your 2025 first round pick Mm -hmm. now to get up to three in all likelihood you guys can correct me if i'm wrong but in all likelihood you are giving up your 2025 first round pick to get up to the patriots pick agreed so can you wheel and deal maybe it goes back to what you just said a minute or two ago phil about maneuvering getting in position where can you get to five and then get to three like there's multiple moves in play where you somehow protect that 2025 first round pick or is the separation in their minds? Now, again, like we don't even know who's going to, but let me just go on the premise that it's Jaden Daniels at pick two. So what is the separation in their minds between Drake May and J.J. McCarthy? Is that difference enough to say, okay, we love Drake that much? Yes, we are giving up our 2025 first. Drake is our guy. Or, hey, we have healthy opinions on both of these guys. Yeah, we favor one over the other, but they are close enough. Or, hey, we're okay with, let's say, J.J., and we get to hold on to our 2025 first. I don't know if we'll ever have that answer, but that, to me, is maybe the most fascinating thing. See, you know, the way Doogie just lays it out, 
I've been saying this for the last couple episodes on Purple Daily, and I literally have hundreds of people in the comment section calling me a coward and scared. You're scared. Identify your guy and do whatever it takes to move up the board. Like, okay, calm down, tough guy. Well, here's I want why the Vikings I offer to draft blowback. a quarterback too, but. Yeah, I'm telling you, Phil, until I hear otherwise, yes, I'm positive. Among, because again, Caleb is going one. So among Jaden, JJ, Drake, I get it. They have somebody they prefer among those three. But my understanding is, like, there's a good amount of interest in all three. So I just don't know how much separation there is. No, you must identify other, one that's guy right. only and give up all of your future first-round picks. But that's the key. The, the key is, and, and we don't know, the thing that we think but we don't know for sure is, do they include McCarthy, and it appears that they do, in a big four? Because it was a big three. So, like, of those four, who do they really want? And and then, you know, if they like May and McCarthy. But th this is where I think we're, we're going to get into or we're in the midst of the most interesting part of this entire thing, you guys. Because this is, as O'Connell, again, O'Connell talks, a, like, he says a lot. When when he gives chapter and verse on the pro days are fine, but we what we really value is going to the kid's college campus and then going out to eat with that kid to see when he walks in into the restaurant if he could sort of controls it. And you know exactly what O'Connell is like that like mm -hmm. you might think, oh come on, what do you mean? And but I know exactly what he's saying. Um and so like if Drake May walks in and he gets a tuna fish sandwich and he's a dead ass. That's going to change their opinion there. So, like this, Dude, to, if you just order a tuna fish sandwich, it, you I might have, be. I got you, questions. Might be a red flag I got there. Questions. That's what I'm saying. But and and tuna like he doesn't tip. Break. You at least like have he, to toast your bread, right? If he doesn't know who the waitress's name is, like I like I wouldn't know. Well, then I wouldn't draft the kid. But anyway, this to me is where you really get to separate these guys as people. Like because this is also about drafting a person. This is not an athlete. This is an athlete, yes, but it's also the person. And this is where I think you're going to separate them as far as a very important dynamic, which is when you walk into that that locker room on day one, do you think people should respect you or do you want to earn their respect? Yes. And so that's why it goes back to what I alluded to in this space last Tuesday that I should have more said a week plus that Kevin O'Connell now, hey, he's been traveling, right? He's in Orlando, right? And now enjoying some family time. But the idea is to get some private time with all these quarterbacks. So credit to Albert Breer for the initial J.J. McCarthy steam on this private workout gathering that's forthcoming. But the idea is with the LSU quarterback, with the North Carolina quarterback, to do the same. Now, hey, the Vikings will have representation in Baton Rouge tomorrow for LSU Pro Day. But I'm just saying the idea is to spend some time with Jaden away from Pro Day, to spend some time away from Drake after his pro day on Thursday. So mm -hmm. it is an incredibly busy stretch because you think about all the draft prospects that will be in town April 7th and 8th. So think about today, March 26th through April 8th, how much diligence the Vikings will be doing. Yeah. Hey, before we keep going here, and we got there's we want your thoughts on some of the draft visits coming up for the Vikings, and then we can get into some Timberwolf stuff here. But uh, a shout-out to our friends, Judd, at Finch Home Solutions. Got an army of vans roaming around in purple and gold looking to fix your electrical They're systems. Up. They oh, are. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And guess <laughs> what? When, when it comes to in any electrical work that you need done at your house, they're your first round pick. Like you don't have to vet all of these companies because Finch, Finch is going to, you know what? Walk in courteous, kind, friendly, leadership. Tuna fish sandwiches. Tuna fish no. sandwiches are out for Finch. Cody Finch does not eat those. No, but no. what he does do is, is he specializes in projects big or small, upgrades to current systems, electrical servicing, storm damage, breakers tripping, flickering lights. Finch Home Solutions has all of your home needs covered. There's nothing more uh, important than protecting your home and, more importantly, your family when it comes to the electronics in, in your home. Their specials include $199 for an entire home safety inspection. The value of that, $357. You're looking at them right there. The team at Finch Home Solutions has you covered. 612-357-2604. FinchHomeSolutions.com. FinchHomeSolutions.com. Nobody's a bigger Vikings fan or a bigger fan of protecting your home than Cody Finch and his team. For the YouTube audience, they do, they do every day. They just line up their vans, and mm -hmm. they put on their Finch shirts, and they mm -hmm. do the drone fly over it's yep. it's it's how they open their day and the gallahorn plays too yeah every like single they, day 
they disperse the vans by the Gallahorn. Mm. Uh, also, zero res is here for spring cleaning season. And now that it's all crappy out the last couple of days, you're trudging in muck and wetness and snow. And maybe you got kids running around, the dog, whatever. It's time for a deep clean here later on this week. And zero res comes in with their score north special three rooms, zero resified starting at just one hundred twenty nine dollars. And this month you can take seventy five dollars off when you get those air ducts zero res clean. Call nine five two zero res or ZeroResMinnesota.com and say you want the score north special. Spell it forward or backwards. It spells the same. Zero res. So Dukes, what else do you have in your in your Vikings scoop bag? We've got all sorts of uh, draft visits coming up. When's their top thirty? Or they're like, what were they called? Were they bringing thirty prospects that they like? Is that coming up sometime soon? Yeah, April 7th and 8th. That's Sunday and Monday. And I don't even know if some of these names are out, not out. But anyway, Michael Hall, a defensive tackle from Ohio State, add him to the list of prospects coming into town. O'Connell alluded to this on Monday, how much work, how much the Vikings were in on some of these defensive tackles, namely Christian Wilkins, like what the Raiders gave Wilkins, I think surprised the Vikings, like the Vikings – like those like 48 hours leading into the official start of free agency. Yeah. Like I'm telling you, like the Vikings were feeling very, very good about their chances of landing Christian Wilkins. And so they didn't. So like, they like a lot of these interior defensive linemen too, in this draft class. I don't know how you maneuver for some of the top guys, but they certainly are doing a lot of homework on interior defensive linemen. Also, I think the Legereus Sneed trade to Tennessee, did that happen after our conversation yeah. last Thursday? Third round pick. So I'm still Friday getting night, some I think, yeah. Yeah, follow-up you know, questions about that. I think it was a combination. Like Clearly, I've said this for weeks, the Vikings had dialogue with Kansas City. Heck, Sneed was very intrigued with the idea of playing for Brian Flores. Like He was uber pumped about that possibility. Sneed was all about, hey, if we can make it work, I want to be a Viking. But it wasn't like Vikings – or bust. It was a combination yeah. because some people are saying, hey, the Vikings are about to get multiple 2025 third round compensatory picks. So why wouldn't you give up a 2025 third round pick? Combination, right? They still want to keep as many draft picks as possible, especially with this idea that they are going to move up here in a month. So, hey, like you don't want to be sacrificing all these future draft picks if you're giving up something to move up now, right? You just you want to maintain as much flexibility moving forward as possible. So my understanding is twofold, right? Like it was the draft compensation, even with the compensatory picks coming in, plus the contract. Like they knew it would take big money, but maybe that contract in the end that Tennessee gave Snead, maybe it went a little bit higher than the Vikings anticipated. So bottom line, yes, there was chatter, but like never, never, it didn't get to the point of like, you know, Vikings and Chiefs, like, you know, getting to the, to use the football cliche, one yard line or two yard line. Like it never got, it never got that like close. the three yard line, you think, Dukes? Not even the three. Yeah. Okay. So right. you know, there was there was mutual interest. Don't get me wrong, but my understanding is it never came super close. Yeah. I mean, they're they're gonna have to start hitting on especially in the trenches on some of these like day three picks. They if you go back and look at the last few years, and last year we'll see what happened. Joquel and Roy might wind up being in the rotation at some point, but yeah, I think he will be. Yeah. There's a lot of just just and you're not going to hit on every fourth, fifth, sixth rounder, but they're going to need a Daniil Hunter. They're they're going to need to find some of these guys that they used to find for a number of years. And you're going to go through ebbs and flows. But. To that point, Phil, look look at what the Chiefs have done on day three. Like they're yeah. replacing guys with day three picks, yeah. offensive line, cornerbacks. Like that's the Mahomes is great. He's fantastic. This is not in any way disparaging him. But when you look at what the Chiefs have done from a drafting standpoint and developmental standpoint and the ability to trade a Sneed without it being crippling, yeah. like that's where you need to be. Yep. Yep. It's uh and, and that's if you if you move up the board to what Doogie was just saying too, let's say you wind up, all right, screw it. We think that Drake May or Jaden Daniels is a franchise changing quarterback, and there is a gap enough between them and the other quarterbacks that it is worth giving up the 2025 first round pick. So you got your guy, but now you only have, so you're going to have no more picks this year until the fourth round. And you're going to have a bunch of fourth, fifth, sixth round picks. That's great. And then next year, you're going to have maybe a couple of third, right now they have two third round comp picks 
or what they have one third round comp pick because the um, the signing of Shaq Griffin Lost mathematically one. changed the equation. Mm-hmm. So you're now hoping that Dalton Reisner signs a contract somewhere else to get the third round. Comp. But my point is like you don't have first and second round picks the next couple of years once you identify your quarterback. So you're going to need to nail a starting defensive tackle maybe in the fourth round in one of these drafts. That's the idea, right? So, like, I'm just telling you, like, yes, legit interest in Sneed, but because of a lot of that, like what you just laid out, like I just don't know if there was ever a time where I would have made the Vikings the betting favorite to land Sneed. So I guess what I'm getting at is I'm not surprised he ended up elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, Timberwolves. So the Timberwolves with a nice little win a couple nights ago against the Warriors. They've uh, TJ Warren's 10-day contract, his second 10-day contract expired. He's been out of the rotation, but they've been winning games without Carl Anthony Towns, dude. They're six and three. Nas Reed and Chris Finch talked about this a couple nights ago. That yeah, he has committed to shooting eight or more threes per game, and he is. He's shooting 10, 11, 8, 8, 9. And uh, Carl Anthony Towns only shooting five. So they're, they're getting kind of better spacing and they're getting just more three point attempts up without cat, which is kind of amazing because he's one of the best three point shooters in the league. But just uh, your general thoughts on the Timberwolves have not crumbled in these nine games. They're still trying to figure out kind of what that roster looks like going into the playoffs and who's going to be healthy. But they're still sitting there with a chance to take the number one overall seed. In Absolutely. The West. Now you brought up the name TJ Warren. He'll be here for the rest of the year. So his second 10 day expires today, but he'll be in uniform tomorrow night at target center against Detroit. The idea is TJ Warren here for the rest of the season. You think about the three losses. So six and three without cat, the three losses at Cleveland. What a weird game. Like Jared Allen's never going to shoot that many free throws in a game. The rest of his career. Then you lose at the LA Lakers. You lose to Denver and you were down multiple guys. So really, you look at their body of work in these nine games, minus Cat, pretty darn good. You look at the rest of the schedule, Phil, pretty favorable. Seven home games, four road games. Now, the four road games are tricky, right? Two in Denver, one at the L.A. Lakers, one at Phoenix. But you look at the home games, like tomorrow night, Detroit. Well, guess what? Like, I'm told there's some internal chatter about giving Mike Conley the night off tomorrow. It makes sense. Like, why would you need to play Mike Conley Jr. against Detroit? You should be able to win that game. You've got Washington coming in soon, right? I mean, if you want to make a case that the Rockets' home game is tricky, the Phoenix home game, I get it. But, like, to me, 7-4 and four is very realistic to finish the regular season. So where does 7-4 and four get you? I'm not sure it gets you to 1, but does it get you to 2? Because you have if, tiebreaker. Well, if, two, if the two of the wins are against Denver, then it, cause that's the thing. Like, if you – you're if right. You beat it Denver, Denver, it changes Denver the game. equation. Agreed. But I think Denver ends up with the one. I think the two is key. And, hey, I've told you this. Like, Glenn Taylor, others with the Wolves will tell you, yes, we want the one seed. A couple other Wolves higher-ups, though, like, there's a difference of opinion. They will say, hey, like, there's such a target on your back when you're the one. We'll happily be the two. I'll tell you what. You look at the standings right now. If New Orleans is the four – Denver is the one. If the Wolves can get to two, that to me is the ideal scenario. The true ideal scenario would be if Sacramento's the seven. And I get it. Sacramento's got some wins this year against the Wolves. But I'd rather play Sacramento than Dallas or Phoenix. Okay, so to me, if you can play Sacramento in the first round, then get, let's say, Oklahoma City in the second round with home court advantage as the two seed, that to me is your pathway to getting to the Western Conference Finals. But bottom line, I think it's realistic when you look at Oklahoma City's remaining schedule, you look at the Wolves' remaining schedule, that they can leapfrog the Thunder. I think it's going to be really hard to leapfrog Denver. Dukes, what's the expectation on uh, Cat's return as far as timing goes? And just as importantly, I guess, what's the, if there is, internal scuttlebutt about where he's going to be? Because a, a meniscus is not a small thing now you you could certainly come back and play but it takes you a little bit of time to come back so what's the expectation for cat and do you think his role or his his minutes change at least for a while because of the fact that Nas, not as phil said Nas has stepped up and Nas has been great and there are areas of the game that i actually think Nas is is preferable i.e what finch talked about a couple days ago which is the spacing 
like Nas totally gets the spacing and the spacing improves with him. It's not to again, not to disparage Cat, but what's the what's hater. the overall? I'm not a I'm not a hater. I'm hater. trying to stay away from no, the like Kirk Cousins hater. He's hating. He's what's hating. What's the? No, I'm not. I'm not hating at all. I'm talking about what this team is going to do. High expectations. <laughs> what do you know? Go. Well, on. I mean, I don't know, Judd, if there's a definitive <laughs> answer right now. Like, Go. Go who do they match up with in the first round? There is a belief that Cat is going to be back, so that's the headline here. Okay, that that Cat they feel like, especially now, what about seven to eight days removed from the surgery in LA that like he's going to come back this year, that he's not lost for the season. But mm-hmm. is that for game one of the playoffs on either April 20th or 21st, that Saturday or Sunday, or is it more like, because the first round of the playoffs is so spread out, right. like the Wolves could play on Saturday, April 20th. Then game two could be Wednesday or Thursday. Like you might have four days between games one and two or four days between games two and three. So, like, do the Wolves say, okay, let's give him that extra seven to eight days. Let's bring him back for game three compared to game one. Like, let's see where he's at in about a week to 10 to even 14 days, potentially two weeks to get a better sense of when he'll be back. But I'm just telling you, internally, there is a strong belief that Cat is going to be back this year. But, like, on the minutes inquiry, Judd, like – are they up 2-0 in a playoff series? Are they down 2-0? Like, what does the spacing look like? How is Nas playing? Right. What sort of shape is Cat in? I mean, there's only so much cardio he can do recovering from the meniscus surgery, yeah. right? I mean, upper body all you want, right? But there's only so much you can do in terms of running, movement, right? You know, really developing a sweat. So, like, what sort of shape will Cat be in? So, there's still a lot of questions to be answered. But the overall question of will Cat be back this year? The Wolves expect him to be back. See, a- another wild card here, Dugues, is Jordan McLaughlin has has been so great with that second unit for ten I'm a to big fifteen J-Mac minutes. Fan. Love him. He's. Yeah. Be- I mean, he was literally being left unguarded on the court in that Denver series and down the stretch in the regular season. He was season. hurt. He went healthy. Yeah. He's shooting forty eight percent from three, and he's not. He's not a guy that you're going to run out there for thirty minutes, but. I guess the point I'm making is if there's a question about Cat cutting it close for the first round and this team continues to be winning at the pace they're winning at, they're six and three without him. You outlined a couple of the losses. I mean, my God, that loss to Denver where they're, they had none of their three big men. They're, they're playing at a really high level without Carl. I would personally, unless he's ready to rock and his cardio is in shape and they can get some practices in before the playoffs, I would go into the first round saying no Carl unless now here's my question to you can you activate a guy in the middle of a series or would he have to he'd have to be active and then on the bench if you're planning on not playing him I would I guess what I'm saying is I would reserve him for like a jolt if you fall behind in the series and you need another chess move or just wait until the second round altogether I would not rush him back yeah you can have him on the bench right I mean he's technically active just not one of DMP. The rotation guy. So he's yeah. sitting there in uniform, but just doesn't come off the bench. I don't know, Phil. I think that's a slippery slope. I mean, I guess it comes down to who are they playing? Like, they're, playing the, the they're, playing, they're playing the Warriors. Well, I mean, the Warriors don't match up well with Cat. Well, they'd have to be the one seed to play the Warriors, right? The only chance the Warriors have is they're going to be in the bottom playing bracket. So they're going to have to win a game and then win another game. So they'd be the eighth seed. So well, I, mean, I mean, let's say the Wolves the... are the two. Let's say the Warriors go on a little run. They win the 9-10 game, right? Although they can only get up to eight, right? Because if they're not in the 7-8 game, the winner of 7-8 is the seven. So, yeah, yeah, you're looking at a scenario where the Wolves would need to they're be playing the, the Suns. They're playing the play Suns. the Warriors the eight. I just – I don't think it's worth if, – if you're playing really well, why rush yeah. him back into into I'll tell you what, situation. if you're playing Dallas, I want Cat. I do. I think it comes well, down I to matchups. I want fully healthy cat, a fully well, conditioned that's it, cat. Right? Like we need to. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Is he going to be not that? playing him game one on April twentieth? If he's literally only gotten like one practice in, and maybe he wasn't even full contact practice, right? So that's why yeah. we just we need to see where he's at those six days. So the regular season wraps on April fourteenth. Where is he on Monday, April fifteenth? Tuesday, April sixteenth? Wednesday, April seventeenth? Yeah. What is he able to do? Is he able to do anything? Is it full contact? Like, let's see where he's at 
in that time frame. But I'm just telling you, the expectation is at some point. Now, maybe it's game four, right? So maybe you give him an extra eight, nine days. You give him games one through three off. Then in that scenario, Phil, what if you're up 3-0? Okay, well, you're probably not bringing Cap back. Or maybe you bring him back for a handful of minutes, but you're probably not disrupting whatever led to being up 3-0. So that's why there's so many factors in play. But I'm just telling you, like, they expect him to be back. Yeah, super interesting. All right, what else is left in your scoop bag? Rapid fire here before we close the show, Dukes. I don't know if this is official. It's probably logical with Caleb Thielbar on the injured list, but Cody Funderburk has been told, hey, you're heading to Kansas City. So Cody Funderburk will begin the season in the Twins' bullpen. Happy for him because there was a chance for him in the winter to go to Japan, start in Japan, yeah. make good money, but the Twins wouldn't let him out of his contract, which I get, right? Like, he's a legit big leaguer that has options. So, like, the Twins are like, you know what? No. Like, we like you, and, hey, we can start you. <laughs> and now you're in the everybody's big. healthy. Oh, bad reliever. Yeah, we'll start you bad reliever. Ball. <laughs> so, anyway, Cody Funderburk on his way to Kansas City to be in the Twins' bullpen. Andrew Morgan from Wasika was second team all summit league at North Dakota state. He will visit the Gophers on Thursday. So Ben Johnson working the portal pretty good. He's also after Taylor Heisey's brother, Nate Heisey from Lake city had a good run at Northern Iowa still has two years of eligibility. He got a medical red shirt with a finger injury a couple years ago, but he was all conference this year. And Hey, like Iowa state's after him. There's a lot of schools after him, the money being tossed about, and I wish I could verify some of this, but like the money being tossed about in the portal is freaking nuts. It really is. And so like the Gophers have some money, actually more money than I think a lot of people realize, but it's not as much money as some other programs. So I'm just, I'm curious to see how it all plays out, but certainly the Gophers, I think have a good chance to land both Morgan and Heisey. I'm also keeping my eye on Will Cheddar from Stewartville from Michigan. So Michigan just got the Florida Atlantic coach. That's a good get. Dusty May. So maybe Will stays in Ann Arbor. But if Will enters the portal, that would be another name to keep an eye on. But the Gophers are also reaching out on some other names, names that don't resonate locally. Guards. I mean, they've been working the portal pretty good. So that tells you that they're anticipating losing some guys. Like I know there's a meeting. Heck, another conversation today, like on Parker Fox. Like what does Parker do? I'd love to see Parker back. I'll tell you guys, if you had asked me in October, I would have told you 100%, no way, no how, is Parker back, even though he has another year of eligibility. But my understanding is, and hey, we saw it on the court. Like, he got minutes. He had so much fun this year. He loves that program so much. I think he's balancing, okay, yeah, I'm in my mid-20s. Do I need yet another year of college or is it time to start, you know, my real life? Yes. My wife and kids right? want, just want me to come I know. home. But there is some balancing going on, even though I, I'm telling you, like in October, I thought it was a slam dunk. No way, no how would Parker be back. But just based on all the activity the Gophers are doing in the portal, it's pretty clear that they're anticipating losing some guys. Yeah, there he is, folks. Darren Doogie Wolfson from the five Eyewitness News Sports Department every Tuesday and Thursday here on Minnesota Sports with Mac. One other note, by the way, Luca Garza. So if the Wolves are in a position where maybe they're locked into like, let's say the three Luke is fine games wise. So he's on that two way, but you can only be active so many games. Yeah. Somebody asked me that the other day. Hey, where are the Wolves at with Luca in terms of games? Luca could literally dress every game the rest of the way. The Wolves are in a good spot there activating him. Okay. Darren Doogie Wilson, folks. Great stuff, Dugs. We'll talk right, again boys, on, we'll Thursday. Talk on Thursday. Yep, sounds good. See ya. All right. And that's a wrap here on this episode. A little scoop Tuesday, a little reckless speculation Thursday on a Tuesday as well here. We'll see you guys for another session on Thursday.